Welcome back to 2.78 miles of the most fun you can have in Western Pennsylvania as we get ready for the Super Sport race here, the Championship of Pittsburgh for Moto America, which means you can see all the bikes on the grid. It's time to get down to Hannah. Hannah, take it away. I'm here with our third place qualifier, qualifier Bryce Prince. Bryce, this is your first front row start this season. Will it be the first podium we see from you this season as well? What do you think? Yeah, uh, we definitely feel like we have the pace to run up with the guys. We led most of the session today in qualifying and just got beat out by a little bit and uh, really worked hard with my crew guys, Ken at Olin's and um, Chris at Flashton, really just getting the bike dialed in for me. And uh, I'm just really excited to be able to be here. I, I wouldn't be able to make it here without Riders Law, and they've given me this opportunity to start up front, and we're hoping to put it on the box today. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you, Bryce. It's great to see, and the thing is, uh, I love about Bryce, that guy can build a bike from scratch. I mean, he's he's very knowledgeable. It's good to see him get that opportunity, like you heard him say, Riders Law stepped up, help him get to these last few rounds. Comes up there, puts it on the grid. He looked very loose before we went to a commercial just now. I saw Gary Dean giving him a pat there and uh, talking. Bryce is looking pretty loose in this morning. I mean, 44-4 to only be two tenths off the off pole. It's a tremendous effort from him. Let's get back down to Hannah. I'm here with our pole setter, Hayden Gillum. Hayden, knowing that JD has a chance to potentially wrap up the championship here at this track this weekend, do you feel an added sense of pressure while you're out there? Or are you just kind of trying to focus on yourself right now? Uh, no, no, no extra pressure. It's it's going to be really tough to to come back on him. Uh, so I'm just I'm doing what, what we can. We're uh, fastest in qualifying, and and our race pace is looking really good. I'm feeling really comfortable on the bike. We've We've uh, figured a lot of stuff out since Sonoma, Sonoma, and I'm feeling really confident. This place, I, I like it a lot, and I think this is going to be a really good track for us. Great. Thank you so much, Hayden. Best of luck. You know, when J.D. has as big of a lead as he has, I think Hayden just wants to get some race wins for his team. I think that those guys have had such a great season this year. That whole ridiculous crew have done a good job putting him up in the front and a lot of knowledgeable people, like we've said. But he's not worried about the championship at this point. That's going to play itself out however it works. He just wants to go out and get wins. And here in the Moto America Championship, 25 points for a win, so we only have 150 points left in this season. Let's get back down to Hannah. JD, this is the first time in a long time that we've seen you starting from the second row. That being said, and with this track being so difficult to pass at, how crucial is it for you to get a really good start today? Yeah, I mean, uh, starting on the second row uh, wasn't what we were hoping for, but, uh, you know, it's a long race too and uh, I mean it is hard to pass here but uh, I, I think there's going to be a lot of passing going on during this race so uh, I think it's going to be a fu uh, fun race and I mean it's, it's all going to start w uh, with the start and uh, it, 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 in the past I've gotten some good starts so I'll, I'm just going to hope for that and uh, go race those guys. Thanks JD good luck. J.D. Beach sitting on a six-race win streak currently, trying to extend it to seven. Nine race wins this season, two second-place finishes. So it's nine race wins, Jason, two second-place finishes in 11 races. It's no Pretty DNFs, solid. and he <laughs> hasn't finished under second place so far. Dominating season, and like Hannah was talking about, J.D. Beach right now has a 100-point lead in this championship. So many scenarios can play out, but in order for Hayden Gillum to even keep it going, He's got to put J.D. Beach behind him because, like I was saying before, only 150 points available left in the season. So the scenario is, with the amount of race wins J.D. has, is if it's 100 at the time we get done tomorrow's race, J.D. Beach will the championship and he'll be awarded the Moto America National Championship number one plate tomorrow on the podium. And I think the thing you have to think about with that is it was expected that he was just going to win the championship. This guy here, Valentin DeBees, had a big crash at Daytona. We never got to really see that head-to-head -head championship battle, but it would have been really easy at certain points in the season for JD to just go ahead and finish second, finish third. He hasn't done that. You know, he's got bigger sights set on some other things going into his future. He wants to win races and show everybody that, you know, he knows that there's a, an opportunity next year to maybe jump on a superbike and continuing to win races is going to help him promote that. For M4X star Suzuki's Valentin DeBees, when he has thrown the helmet on and been able to start a race, he hasn't finished lower than second spot. Take a look at the grid. Hayden Gillum on pole. Yep, Valentin DeBees and then Bryce Prince round out row one. J.D. Beach, Richie Escalante, 600 Superstock.
from last year. Great to see him on the other ridiculous bike up in those first two rows. Braden Ort, Michael Gilbert, Anthony Maziato on row three. Nick McFadden, a little further back for Nick and Corey West next to him. Good run this morning from Daytona Anderson there to round out row four. Row five, Ashton Yates, Xavier Zayat, local guy, Lu Lucas Silva. Uh, row, in row five there, row six, Miles Thornton, Benjamin Smith, they just got that bike back together uh, to, to get him out there, Greg. And then we got Jarrett Nassani, Caroline Olson, and Stephen Dietz in row seven. Row eight, C.G. LaRoche, Fernando Silva, and Nolan Lampkin. A couple of these guys we've seen in the past years. It's good to see them now that we've come to the East Coast. They're back out. Joe Giannato, uh, Mauricio Roque, and uh, Gary. Gary's going to have to kill me later on for not knowing that one. Timothy Wilson, Andrew Bowen, and Tyler King are going to round out row ten. So Gary and Koski. Yeah, easy. Easy peasy. Yeah, we'll have to find him. So a full grid of racers taking the Super Sport grid, so 30 in total, and a good span of times as well here at Pit Race. As we take a look over at the fans, so many people coming out to this racetrack and enjoying the Moto America Championship is, again, round eight of 10 for the season as Hayden Gillum. He's done the first thing he needs to do, which yep. is give himself the best shot into turn number one, the cleanest look if he can get the clutch out well. But there's a whole gaggle of riders behind look him. Look how going downhill the start is. You know, there's some tracks we go to that it's uphill, like Laguna Seca is an uphill start. This is a downhill start that goes into a little dip. And the hardest part about a track like this that has a lot of elevation is they are so used to coming down the front straightaway at a certain speed. Now they're not going to quite have that speed. The brake marker that they would normally use. Uh, on a fast first lap or fast full lap will be different than it is now. And it's kind of hard to, to, to get your timing right right off the start. So if you've been here before at Pittsburgh and done these starts, then you kind of know. But even if it's the first race of the weekend like it is for these guys right now, uh, they'll put that in their memory banks for tomorrow. Great conversation with Valentin DeBees on that M4X Star Suzuki yesterday, Jason. And we talked about the condition of the racing surface here at pit race because you know last year we came there was new pavement and the dunlop tires took an absolute beating as we always expect on new asphalt and one year later dunlop was able to send a representative out here last week and do some laps to determine what kind of tires they should bring now we kind of in this mode right now where the surface hasn't quite broken into exactly where it could be next season or the season after. So we're in this middle phase where there's still a lack of traction because the tires are a little harder than riders want, all this kind of stuff. So I'm talking to Valentin DeBees about it, about rear grip, which is what we've been hearing since we rolled these things out on Friday, Jay. And Valentin said, listen, we don't have that much rear grip because the tire's hard, I know. I got it, I'm dealing with it, it's over. We're not gonna chase rear grip on our team. We're gonna chase everything else in terms of how the bike handles. And I thought, wow, there's a lesson to be learned actually from the riders in the mindset of Valentin DeBees and his team. I, you know, first off, DeBees is on one of the most, obviously the most professional and experienced teams with that M4 team. But the way he attacks and the way he looks at his riding and the intelligence that he shows is second to nobody in our whole paddock. I love how he just goes about getting on with it. What you're talking about right now is we're at a racetrack that almost has too much grip, which is great. I mean, pit race is a tremendous track. It's smooth. Everybody loves it. So, but the thing is, it's got so much grip, it tears up tires. So these guys are all on a little bit different tire than they normally would be on. They're all fighting the same exact issue, the edge grip, the side grip. From the time that they get the bike from a, a rolling through the middle of the turn to apex to just cracking that throttle on, they're all suffering a little bit. So it's going to be how well you can manage it. The quicker you get that out of your mind and just get on with it like the bees has done, uh, that's why I really feel like you know he is he is going to be there all the way to the end of this race with, with the bees. I'm more curious to see what Jason Aguilar does, what Bryce Prince does, what Richie Escalante have done with their good starting positions. You know, we're always talking about kind of about the best of the rest. Do to try to stay up with these other three guys that have kind of dominated the championship. And looking at that championship, I would love to throw Nick McFadden in that mix, Jason. Yep. I really would on that M4 Med Age Suzuki. But for Nick, who qualified in 10th at a 146 flat, he also suffered a pretty big crash. Correct. He's sore. Yep. So that's really a question mark right now. This isn't the most physically demanding track on the circuit. We know that riders talk a lot about Barber, they talk about Sonoma where we just were, but there still is a lot of physicality, especially in the sections you're talking about, coming out of turn six through seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way through turn 14. It can take quite a bit out of you, and especially if you're a rider that's had an incident this weekend and you're already sore. Yeah, and there's no question. Nick's done a tremendous job all season long, but when you crash out of a session and you miss all those extra laps that you can maybe put in to get to your race setup a little bit more it definitely puts you on 
on, on the rear foot there. So, you know, I think coming to a track like this with a turn one like it is, and then they go up over kind of a tricky turn two, there's going to be a lot of jostling at the beginning. So what I'm really hoping is we get a, this big grid of 30 riders through that first turn safely and cleanly so that they can get that run up to turn three. And uh, then you're going to see some passing opportunities as you get up there. There's a great look at Bryce Prince uh, right here on the front row. Let's see what he can do. It's time to see if Philpott, Kentucky's ridiculous racings. Hayden Gillum can turn this pole into a race win. Lights are out, and we're starting Super Sport Race action, going after it. And J.D. Beach oh. is getting sandwiched. He got a good start, but Valentin DeBees didn't know. He pinched him off. Oh, look at or Ort's inside there oh, also. he was so deep. Man, he had to let the lever off. I saw the front of that bike bounce back up. Was he able to keep it in fourth grade? You can see there's some separation there now. Beautiful. Right he off was. the bat, he was able to keep it there. And there's a guy that we forgot to even mention. But Braden Ort, uh, when he puts the helmet on for races, he always comes to go to the front. And... Uh, you're not going to be the nicer kid in the paddock as <laughs> Braden Ort, but when he puts the lid down, he's ready to race. And right off the bat, fourth. And how about is that not Bryce Prince there? Also want to look for Maziato as well. He did the double last year here in our 600 Superstock. But Valentine B is going to work really early on Gillum as they come up out of turn six and head into these S's for the first time. No problem with rear grip on that Suzuki GSXR 600. So Valentin DeBees taking over the lead over Hayden Killam. J.D. Beach still right in the mix. Ort holding on to four spot from Calgary, Canada on that tuned racing machine. So Ort with a good launch, putting himself in a good position. Oh, it looks like though that the 74 got around Ort. So Ort now in fifth. And this is what these guys at the front don't want to see. They don't want to let these three guys break away. Escalante makes quick work of Ort as well. As they go into the turn 12 area, Greg, he gets through. So Ort right now has got passed by Prince and Escalante on this opening lap. Both guys that are in fourth and fifth right now have shown that they can run the pace of the guys at the front. They've just got to not let him get away. Valentin DeVees through the chicane, M4X star Suzuki. And this is the time of the year too, Jason, where we look at these top three, we know that these top three are at the sharp end like I talked about. The question is, as we transition from this mid part of the season to the tail end of the season, who are gonna be the next? Who are gonna be the next group of riders that are able to step up and run this kind of pace? And that's what we're looking for behind Valentin DeVees. Once again, since Valentin's return, he was injured the first couple races oh. of the season. J.D. Feach up right the underneath. inside. And, and this that is, is such a hard pass. It's such a hard pass. It's a big committed turn, but he can see what's going on right now. He sees DeVees getting out front. Valentin DeVees, I say every single telecast. This guy, when he comes out first in practice, he's first out in every session, and he puts his head down from the first lap. And that's what he did just now. J.D. Beach sees... Uh, the, the, DeBees is just starting to pull away a little bit and uh, wants to get by Gillum. Gillum's going to just fall right back into the back there behind J.D. Beach right now. Oh, rider down. So we have a See, rider that that's is, tipped over. That's uh, going to be Steven Dietz, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's down. Looks like he's up and okay. But look at what Bryce Prince and Escalante do. Now, what these two have to do is not mess with each other. I know Richie wants to get through. He wants to get past. But Bryce Prince went 44-2 this morning. He is right able to do the pace. And he even looks a little bit faster down through this S section than did Escalante. This is a big move. Oh, he tried a big pass there, guys. Turn one, Greg. So just what you saw. No, it's not. Sorry, it's turn three. Mm -hmm. So that was a big a big try for him going down into turn three. Uh, Deeds, he's, he's, okay. up, he's up and rolling on this one. But So back to the front we go. Valentin DeBees, J.D. Beach. Nothing really between them and Hayden Gillum, and really, it's the price for it's Richie Escalante. They're about equal behind them as well. As Richie Escalante, in this top five, is the fifth rider, number 54, out of Mexico on the Quicksilver Hudson Motorcycles machine. So Escalante, Jason, listening to you, obviously he can hear you. And he was like, don't mess with Price Prince yep. yet. Just let's see how this race unfolds as Prince had a good lap, so we're waiting for lap times to come in. And Bryce Prince with the fastest lap of the race so far, 144.348 last time by. So 44.5, 44.3 for J.D. Feet, but it's the 74 of Prince trying to stay in tow of these three front runners. And that's a little bit why you want to just let the race kind of come to you. We've got 14 laps to go. Bryce Prince is going to be there, it looks like, at the end of this race. He looks very solid right now, and you can see He's actually opened up a gap. Where Bryce is amazing is out of this turn six here, his bike looks like it works pretty well for him. And then all down through these next S's, uh, the S's he was able to really open up a little bit of a gap on Richie the last time by. Actually, out of six, Bryce's bike doesn't look as good. But all through this section, it looks tremendous. And you can see Escalante has pulled up on the back of him as they come down into this S section. Bryce Prince we're talking about there. 
First rider under screen number 74 on that black bike. So that is the Rider's Law. Now the Rider's Law KWR machine. It's J.D. Beach hanging tight. We've seen J.D. do this before. Normally, J.D. likes to lead, and that's the thing I'm kind of looking at from J.D. He was able to work his way past Hayden Killam, and he started to set sail towards Valentin to Bees. Got within a half a second like he is now, but he's not within striking distance of making a move for the lead. And you can't say necessarily, Jason, that J.D. Beach likes to hang back here because he does like to lead like, uh, you know, that four-time Superbike champ, yeah. Josh Hayes. That's exactly right. He does. And, you know, I'm really impressed right now. because It looks like Escalante made a mistake back there in the chicane. So now we've got a four-rider group here. I'm really impressed right now the most with Bryce. He's been able to go with these guys. He, he had to pass a couple of guys early, but he's been able to show that he does have the pace. 44-1, 44 flat uh, for the first two guys, 44 threes for the next two. Escalante runs a 44-6 with making a mistake as well. So when you start looking at the lap times these guys are doing, look at how they're starting to pull away. They are below where we qualified, Greg, at a 44 flat. That's two tenths quicker than we qualified. That's why you see right now Hayden Gillum getting dropped. But this is where the laps come in for somebody like DeBees. And he goes out and he puts down so many laps in practice. And uh, you can see where that's paying off for him. Two of the different lines, they head down into that turn six area. Valentine opens up the entry a little bit more than JD does as they come up over the top of this hill. For J.D. Beach and his, and his crew on that Monster Energy Yamaha Extended Services Graves Yamaha case, they really kind of missed session number one on yesterday on Friday. And the reason was because they actually had uh, a clutch that wasn't working right for them. So what we did see out of J.D. Beach was you know, down the time sheets. He was fifth fastest yesterday, obviously fourth in qualifying. But one of the reasons you're seeing him up here is because he just had to play some catch up as the other riders in the field just were kind of advancing forward. So J.D. Beach and his crew doing a great job after a uh, warm up this morning to get that fight in race shape. Yeah, what J.D. is so good at, and you see this from a lot of dirt trackers, is they're used to making uh, changes on the fly. And by that I mean, a dirt track is continuously changing. Our road stuff isn't changing as much, but what he'll be able to do is look at where DeBees might have an edge and look at the places that he might be able to adjust his lines to kind of see what DeBees does. If you see how tight Valentin can hold that Suzuki off that corner right there, um, he's able to just kind of carve it. It looks like he's got tremendous grip, to be honest. That, that tire looks really good on him, but if you look at the track that he uses, look, he's a little bit wide there, but he opens up the entry to that. JD kind of saws off the entries a little bit more, but he's still able to get the bike in there and turn it. And we got right another down. bike down. Oh, this is Richie? No. It looks like you're, you might be right, Richie, uh, Greg. It did look like Escal. It, it is, because he didn't show up on our screen that time through. Richie so, Escalante. That's, that's going to be coming out of, uh, that's going to be coming out of turn 14. That is a big crash. That's going to, wow. And we saw him make a mistake from that prior to that. So here you go. This is going to be coming out of here. And he had already high-sided coming down that hill. I'm not sure if he got that bike off into the grass just a little bit or not. But uh, that's going to be a pretty big crash. I'm glad to see him get up from that one. Yeah, great job by our corner officers to get that, get that bike the race still going, at least for the moment. Yep. Able to get that incident taken care of. As we still, Valentin DeBees continues to lead the way on that M4 X-Star Suzuki, the Frenchman. Doing a great job. Hayden, Hayden Gillum fell back just a little bit. Now he's kind of he's kind of maintaining that gap just a little bit to those two. He he was really hoping that these two guys start to engage up in a little bit of a battle. This is the area where we just saw Escalante tip off. So the corner workers did a good job. Look at how low and, and, and through that kink Hayden Gillum is getting. Just trying to take advantage of every kind of little slipstream he possibly can. And look at Price Prince just went right with him. This is gonna be a big boost for somebody like Bryce Prince. It is, and, and really I think the question needs to be answered is in the next, I would say probably five to seven laps for Bryce Prince, because we know a lot of riders can go quick, especially when the tires are brand new, they have a lot of grip, but how good is the setup at this pace for Bryce Prince? Is it a setup that's gonna allow the tire to go race distance? I think that's a, a big question to be answered, and if he's able to hold on to that position, as we get the last couple laps of this race, Bryce Prince definitely has a legit shot at the podium. Well, Bryce also, from Bakersfield, California, he frequents a track called Button Willow a lot out there, and it's really hot. So he's used to riding around on tires that might be a little bit greasier than others. And uh, so I think that he will have a tire underneath him. What he's really just eyeing right now, he's just trying to watch everything that Gillen's bike is doing with the hopes that maybe 
he can do something with Gillum towards the end. I'm going to look at this first split because you can see Gillum's pulled away a little bit. 43-3, Gillum does the fastest split of these guys, only just though, uh, about the same actually as J.D. Beach. But they're all kind of in the same little bit of an area. But the front two again, Greg, are just starting to show a little bit of pace. So it is Valentin DeBees continuing to lead the way. Number 53 out of France on that M4X star Suzuki. And then you have J.D. Beach, your championship points leader on that Monster Energy Yamaha Extended Services Graves Yamaha. Oop, J.D. with a battle. That could be a sign that the rear tire is taking some abuse. And that'll catch your attention, you know. And right now, Valentine DeBeast's bike looks so good to me. Like, it literally hasn't put a wheel wrong. And like I can't stress it enough, seeing how many laps this guy turns. Here you go. You've got to get that bike turned prior to even seeing the apex. And that's exactly what he's doing. JD just got that bike turned. You come up over the crest of a hill there, and that's when you saw the bike just pop out from underneath him a little bit. But right now, DeBeast just looks so strong. This also is a chance for Hayden Gillum. If, if Hayden thinks he has any pace, he might start throwing a shot at JD Beach, and that's going to allow Valentin to start eking away. And one of the things I find really interesting, even going into turn one, I want you to see how patient Valentin is with getting his crests. If you notice, when he comes up over the top of the crest, his bike's in a line. There's no backing in. He's trying everything he can to control the back end of that motorcycle. And he's doing that by pulling the lever on straight as he goes up over the top of those crests and waiting until tipping in after the crest. JD kind of, because he's so used to dirt tracking and he's so used to backing the bike in, as he comes up over the top of the crest holding, holding the front brake lever, he's also giving it a steering input. And that's why the bike's backing in. He has to wait for that bike to get back underneath him before he can really turn it. The bees doesn't do that. So if you look at that first little split, 43 flat that time for Hayden Gillum. He's purple on our screen. Quickest split for Hayden Gillum as he's closed up on the back of his friend. But I want you to pay attention next time, Greg, when they go into turn one and see how DeBees waits until the bike is on the back side before he tips it in. One interesting conversation point I had with Valentin DeBees last night as we talk about the age of the GSX-R600 versus, say, the Yamaha R6 was the sophistication levels are different in terms of the electronics. So what the Yamahas are able to do over the crest of these hills and all the things you're talking about with electronics, they're having to do it, the GSX-R600 and the M4XR Suzuki team with the clutch. And Valentin spent a lot of time yesterday focusing on the clutch feel and how it works so he can use it to his advantage to keep those wheels in line. And that's a great point. I mean, the fact that you're on top of that is great because that's what I'm seeing on the screen. Now they're coming down into turn one here. I want you to watch. You're not gonna maybe get to see Valentin this time, but he's got a good look at John Ethel. But uh, you can see, see how backed in JD's bike is and how Valentin just takes it up over the top of the rise, holds the lever on, and then tips it in. Both wheels are in line. That's going to give you a lot of confidence, and it's going to help preserve your tire life just a little bit. Now Gillum is all over the back, trying to go up underneath JD to turn three. Not quite close enough. I just keep my eyes right now on JD's rear tire yep. and his, his input. Now, everybody's talked about it, Jason. You're talking about, you know, there's, it's very weird to talk about pit race and say there is a ton of grip, there is a ton of grip. The problem is there's so much grip that it's still tearing up the soft tires for you know for Dunlop. So they had to bring a little bit harder compound tire, and that's what's causing the rear grip. You want more rear grip and fine rear grip. And so it's always a fine balance, and having race number one and race number two coming up tomorrow, there's a good opportunity. Yeah, look at that. That's a great move in those S's. He just straight lined that Beautiful. from that left to the right. So. Right to the apex. Got it turned. And now Hayden Gillum takes over second spot from J.D. And Beach. look at Bryce and, Prince. Oh, oh, he's, he's right, right there. there. He's got to love this. Have we seen anybody this close to J.D. and ha ha uh, no. Hayden? And all year long. So tremendous job for Bryce Prince on that 74 bike. Drafted into Kyle Wyman's team this year, and he's been trying to find the funding to continue his season. Riders Law did it. They made the announcement right before they got here, allowing him to finish off the season. So thanks really to Riders Law for stepping up and keeping this young talent in this field. And look at it, it's paying dividends for the fans right now as Valentin DeBees with over a second. Let's take a look at the replay. He's just going to line it up. He's going to release that turn a little bit sooner. And as JD went to open it up, Hayden just kind of went right underneath him. And you can see he had to pick that bike up just a little bit from getting on the paint. He had his body over the grass, Greg. And look, Hayden's doing the exact same thing, exact same thing as, as the beast at the front. He's holding that lever on. He's coming up over the top. And then he's waiting to tip the bike in. So we're going to see how that plays out. I'd love to talk to both those guys about 
how they view this. A little bit further back, how about this? Jason Aguilar with a shocking start. He was all the way back in 10th or 12th, but Corey West is up to 6th on the TSC back R6 with uh, McFadden as well in 8th. So we got 6th, 7th, and 8th. This is the battle for Brayden Orton is up the road of about four and a half seconds from these guys. Corey's been struggling all weekend. They've been throwing the kitchen sink at that bike, trying to get it better. And uh, good to see Nick also. What's Nick's time? What's his quickest, Greg? 45.8. So these guys have got into the 45s. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at So Mick McFadden is quicker than he was when he qualified by a couple tenths of a second. But also with Nick McFadden in being hurt after yesterday's crash, I have to say sometimes, Jason, your mind gets so focused on this battle that it can divert your attention from any pain that Nick McFadden might be in. And I have to say hats off to the uh, M4 Med Aid Suzuki rider Nick McFadden right now in eighth spot. Yeah, he was sure. in seventh, so it's a great battle between Corey West, Jason Aguilar, the 96 on that ridiculous racing Yamaha. As Aguilar likes to get nice and low yeah, as he goes he through does. the corner. Yep, and, it, and you know the thing is, is you know you're, you're probably going to talk to Jason after this race. He's going to be frustrated that he got as bad of a start as he did. Let's see if he can do anything. Corey's bike works really well. It looks like as they come through that 13th and 14th corner corner where Aguilar is not quite close enough to him there. This is the battle for sixth spot we're looking at. It's Corey West, number 36, leading the way. Then it's Jason Aguilar in seventh and Nick McFadden in eighth spot. Now Nick, he was up in, in that seventh spot, Jason. And now it looks like maybe Nick has lost a little bit a little of that time, huh? So maybe halfway through this race, a little past that, he's starting to feel the effects of that crash as Aguilar. Goes around the outside as they come down up into six. turn one. Yep, gets himself up in the sixth spot. I'm going to keep an eye on what his lap times are. So the ridiculous guys have two guys in the top six right now. 45-3 is what Jason has ran in this race. 46-5 that last lap. So we'll see if he's able to improve. You can see a big battle behind those guys even with uh, Maziato it looked like and Michael Gilbert in that battle. Xavier Zayat also in the mix back. Ghost Road right off one right, right off the racetrack earlier today into the woods. It literally went into the woods. When you told me that, and then we saw it on our cameras. It literally just rode off into the woods. So they were able to get that bike back going again. Quick look over the shoulder for Corey West, the veteran rider who started off the year on the M4X R Suzuki team. Had a podium finish at the beginning of the year, Corey West. He sits uh, sixth in the championship, but was in third for the first half of the season. And it's TSE Racing who stepped up and, and found a lot of value in the veteran Corey West. Now, this that newer motorcycle, it's only, yeah. it's only the third race for them, I think, right? It's, Second it's, or third race for them on the newer bike? Yeah, it's a good run for him. I talked to him yesterday. He said he was feeling some confidence issues after his crash in Sonoma, just simply because he just, oh, oh that's Braden Ort. Ort. That's Braden Ort. That's going to be, oh, that, now that is, that's like spot. at the top of the hill, Greg. That's going to be, is that 13 and 14? Because he was ahead of those guys. So that looks like it's coming down the hill. I'm having a look here. He's running back and getting something. Very, oh, He's getting a visor. Shield. This is a big high side. Ooh. Oh, man. That was a bucking Bronco. That is such a crazy place to fall off. Oh, so good to see Braden get up from that. So that's going to be the little kink left, turn 13 at the top of that hill. That is actually out of everyone's way. You can see back here at the front. We got really spread really out. Really spread out a little bit. But this guy's still pounding out minute 44 lap times. He's at a minute 44.4. When we went to Sonoma, Valentin DeBee said he felt that he and his team spent a little bit too much time working on the setup of the motorcycle in terms of like going for it. And so one of the things that he and the m 4 Star Suzuki team decided to do when they got here was alter their strategy a little bit. And they worked on race setup, Jason, since the moment they rolled onto the racetrack Friday morning. Obviously, it's paying off for them. And this is part of being an intelligent racer, not only just Valentin DeBees, but you have to have the crew that's able to do it as well. But you also think about what he does, and this is a, this is going up over turn one. The bike is just a little backed in, but hardly at all. A I mean, little really, backed in, that yeah. bike is That bike is right in line, and that's going to be the rider doing that. I mean, absolutely 100%. That's just Valentin DeBees' racecraft there as they come up over the top of that hill on turn one. And, and it's, this guy does so much tire testing and rides so much when he's over at, at back at home in France. And look at Bryce Prince still in the back of JD Beach. He wants that one bad. And, uh, but, but the beast does, he's used to not riding perfect motorcycles. He's yeah. used to riding bikes that move around and do some other things. So I don't think that it affects him at all. Bryce Prince right now is doing everything he can to line up JD Beach. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on what happens here. We remember last year, JD struggled in the first race here at pit race they made some adjustments the second day he kept Garrett a lot closer but uh yeah. looking at his times 
45-1, 44-9. So Bryce Prince still in those 40, still in the 44s. Yeah, but you mentioned Garrett Gerloff. I mean, last year he was insane here. You know that? Oh, up and out of the saddle goes J.D. Beach as he was cresting that hill. And you saw him get on the pegs and just ride it out moto style. And now they're in the back markers. And this, this track is very hard to pass. So he's going to probably go to the right with this guy. Bryce Prince is going to have to get down there in a hurry and hustle to go with him. And that's exactly what he did. And uh, just kind of, you got, this is going to be a place, Greg, where if you're racing somebody for position, it, it's so important to get to them, to the back markers first. To bees with a 44-7 that last lap, Hayden Gillum ran him in half a second. So that could have been, could have been a back marker situation or whatever. I'm looking to see how, how DeBees is responding on this lap in that first sector. And he's up a little bit. I don't often say this, Jason, with, when J.D. Beach is racing, but with the way that his motorcycle's moving around now, it almost looks like, with about four laps to go, that J.D. Beach might be a sitting duck for Bryce Prince, and this is what we wanted to talk about all season long. No, that's exactly right. Bryce, Bryce, I feel, could be, you saw the yellow lights there, that's gonna be for Orts Crash. Uh, right now, Bryce probably feels like he wants to be a little bit patient, but, but he's, he's gotta be decisive. He's got to be very decisive on where he wants to make his move. He's getting a good look at what JD's bike is doing. This could be a spot here that, that I noticed earlier. Bryce's bike seems like it turns really well all the way through this last corner. He opens up the entry just a little bit, but he's got really good grip on the exit of this turn. That said, JD pulled away from it just a little bit with a little bit of pumping, huh? Just a little bit of rear tire spin, I think, on that one for J.D. Beach. The Valentin to is now the 1.5 second lead. So Jason, like you were saying, he gave up a half a second back to Gillum, but then that lap, he grabbed another four tenths back. So the lead extended again to 1.5 seconds, and then it's another two and a half back to J.D. Beach and Bryce Prince. Jason Aguilar moves up into fifth spot with the exit of Great North earlier. And you have Corey West in sixth, Nick McFadden. Oh. Back. Uh, JD's bike, yep. sorry, Greg, saw just, that. No, just on rolling off the throttle there, you saw the rear of the bike just kind of snap around on him a little bit. So, Jay, so Bryce is going to get a chance to see that. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. Bryce saw where Gillen did it, and Bryce looked extremely fast through the S's, but he can't get out of six. He's got to get close enough to JD down in this area to try to do something like what Hayden did to JD. I don't think he's close enough, but it's out of this left to the next right that we saw the big move. And here you go. He's He's kind of looking at it, wasn't he? You kind of could see that there, that he was looking at it. But see how much tighter his bike's turning? Bryce's bike looks really good through this little section. And they're coming up on lap traffic, and that lap traffic is battling each other. Now, there are blue flags that wave for traffic that's being lapped. And there's a rule in Moto America that says you can't take advantage of that blue flag. Meaning, if you're racing with someone and the blue flag waves, you can't go past the competitor if you're behind them. So, you're able to hold the position. So, it looks like it. They're, no. gonna, they're gonna be able to get by. Is it, oh, Bryce going the wrong way. Nope, he was able, oh, look oh. at that, Greg. Wow, what a move by Bryce Prince. I was completely stumped on that. JD must have had to really get out of the gas. And Bryce just saw that opening on the left-hand side of the track there and makes that pass work. Tremendous job from Bryce Prince. Now, he's gotta just get his head down the best he can and just look forward. And, and, and that's what he's gotta try to do. Hope that JD doesn't go back up underneath him right now. So across the stripe they go, it's DeBees, Dillon, Bryce Prince, J.D. Beach. Yeah. Man, that's so aggressive in one. You know, if I'm Bryce, you just gotta know that that's gonna come back at you. Move over to the left, make it to where he's gotta run around the outside of you because J.D.'s so tremendously hard to pass under braking. But now Bryce is on the back of him. They got another back marker coming up. That was that was a big opportunity for Bryce. This is where he saw J.D.'s bike earlier, but you can see J.D. must have had to just check up just a little bit going around the outside, knowing that that chicane's coming up, and Bryce kind of zipped down the inside of both of them. And Andrew Bowen, he did the right thing, too. He just held his line straight and allowed those. He didn't make any, uh, you know, sudden moves, and that allowed that to happen. So with three laps to go in this one, there's the battle for third spot. For a moment, Bryce Prince was on that podium, but J.D. beats so strong into one. Yep, and here we go through those S's again. J.D. is going to have to start to get creative on what he wants to do. Here he goes. Tim Wilson having a look over his shoulder yep. on the 84. Good man. Gets out of the way of both those guys. Yeah. Good job That's from him. That's a tricky spot, by it's the way, really to do that. It's a really tricky spot. So good job, 84. So the battle rages on for third spot. So Bryce Prince now having a couple things to really deal with because of just kind of the one-line nature of this track in some spots. Not only do you have to think about where you're going to get J.D. Beach, but this lap traffic might play a factor with two and a half to go in this one. Yeah, 
and, and now, you know, if you're Bryce, now you got to start getting not so frantic, but you've really got to make that decision of where you think this might happen. And it's a hard track to pass on. You can see up in front of those guys, just at the top of our screen there, when they went through that chicane, the Bees is just still holding that kind of constant one-second gap yeah. over Gillum. Down to so, one. Yeah, down to one Lost second. Lost another half. Like you're saying, that could yep. have been lap traffic as well. Correct. Correct. And see, Bryce just doesn't quite have the drive grip. And he's a little bit bigger guy as well when they come out of that last turn. But see how much he closes up on the brakes and tipping in? And JD's so good at just, like, getting the bike back in a little bit, getting the bike turned and getting on the gas. Both guys now going up over the top of turn two are getting some head shakes. Bryce Prince, number 74, second bike in this screen. Trying to find a way around JD Beach. You can see JD just a little, a little bit of a squirt there on that transition. We're getting to the part where Bryce Prince is strongest. It's a penultimate lap on this race. Next time by. This is the turn he's got to get out of, Greg. This is the turn he's got to get out of with JD. And it just, you see how JD's bike just turns, finishes it just a little bit better. That opens up that gap. So now Bryce has got to close that gap up on the brakes. And if he's going to do something, it's got to be a big commitment out of like this left hand. See how much roll speed he's got going in? Yeah. But he kind of runs up the back. He's got to time that a little bit differently. Hold back a little bit more, carry that roll speed, and do exactly what Hayden did, and, and continue that. That's right. It's a very difficult pass. The bees back up to a 1.3 second gap over Hayden Gillum. So that's looking pretty set at the moment. We'll continue to watch this battle for third spot. J.D. Beach holding on to it for the moment. We're talking with J.D. about the championship, he said, I don't care, all I want to do is win races. As Prince thought he had, he thought he had a moment there, I thought, where he could kind of shoot oh, up. this Here is such goes. a big move doing it so to deep. Chicane. Wow, is he fast through there. Whoa. Tremendous job from Bryce Prince. He got the run, Greg, that's what he needed to do. He needed to get that run, and what he has to do now is get out of this turn, and if he doesn't get out of it, even perfect, he knows. He's got to move over to the left. As they come to the white flag, JD's going to get in that draft. He's got to look at He's moving over to the left, Greg. Is Bryce Prince. Already, yeah, he was mid track. Let's see what, if he's able to do. Suzuki's Valentin to Bees with a comfortable lead, and he does it. So Bryce Prince able to hold off JD Beach now he's in got, turn one. Now he's got one more straightaway. He's got to do it. He's got to move over to the left again. He's, he's fast got, here, though. And this is the problem. He's going to get in the draft. And, and, and go right back by. Oh, oh. no. You know what I heard? Price. I heard rev limiter right there, oh, Jason. Oh, you did, did you? Yeah. I did, and I, I'll have to check the data on that one. But it might have been where J.D. Peach got such an incredible run that it just, the rev limiter snuck up on him. This is the perfect place for Bryce to catch somebody, too. If he can get this guy going down into the S somehow, if he can get past him, I think he's, I don't think he's going to be close enough. Yeah, he's not going to be close enough, so he's going to have to wait behind this right and then between the next left right, he's gonna have to just try to squirt past, or somewhere in this little S section, he's gonna be able to try to squirt past. There it is, between that right and the left. Beautiful. He gets by, that's exactly what he needs to do. Now he's gonna have a feeling in, 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 of knowing that he probably bamboozled, <laughs> bamboozled that JD Beach a little bit there. Yeah, you know, because when you're that deep in that corner, you know from endurance racing is oh. JD stands up lap traffic, so JD did what he had to do to even give himself a shot as we are on the last lap of this race. And Bryce Prince has worked himself into third, methodically chipping away lap after lap and corner after corner with some aggressive moves. Could Bryce Prince stand on top or on third place in the podium as Hayden Gillum is nice and close on this final lap to Valentin DeBees? And DeBees' bike still looks so good. It still looks so good on the edge of the tire. What a tremendous win. Here we go, coming to the stripe, number 53, Valentin de Bees will take victory here in race number one at Pit Race. The M4X star Suzuki rider will stand on top of the box, and it's got to be Hayden Gillum in second spot. Bryce Prince holds off J.D. Beach by 1.2 seconds. Oh, he'll be the third <laughs> rider. Oh, I feel so bad for Gillum. 0.8 of a second was all it was back to Gillum. At the finish, at the finish line, and uh, you know, it's funny because he kind of let those guys get away a little bit, and then they pulled him back. He was able to pull him back after he got by JD. So look at Bryce Prince. Congratulations! By Tremendous the way, effort. I, I just want to say this: the fastest lap of the race yep. was set by 0.09. So yep. in essence, a 44.1. Yeah. That was three. He did a 44.2 on the last lap less than two tenths of a second slower than the fastest lap of the race and Hayden Gillum a 44.5. The thing is, Bryce Prince, he'll, he'll go back to his crew. He'll, he'll wish that the next race was 
this afternoon. Yeah, you know? right, exactly. Because you, you're so amped up, and you now you've ran those laps that they ran. What was it, 16 laps, Craig? Yep. He's ran those 16 laps. He knows his bike is close. Tomorrow morning, he's going to be just itching to get out for warm-up to maybe try anything new that he may want to try on that motorcycle. Um, but that's such a big confidence boost. He still had, he was only 5.1 victory. And, uh, and so, really good job for him. Valentin DeBees had a lot of swagger yesterday. He was just so happy and smiling. DeBees also on the lips of a lot of people talking about the potential to move up into the Oshimira Suzuki factory ride on the, in the Motola Superbike class. So much conversation surrounding, you know, Valentin DeBees, JD Beach's future. Is he going to move up into the Superbike class next year? There's so many riders talking about so many things that it feels like, in a way, Jason, because Suzuki has not made their decision, as they told me today, on who they're gonna who they're gonna offer a ride to. Is like every lap really has, you know, an, an impact. It feels like it that every lap has an impact on the future of these riders. Yeah. And Valentin DeBees just did himself favor. Not that JD Beach obviously didn't do any damage by finishing fourth, but Valentin DeBees definitely his stock rose today. Yeah, 100% right. And there's really any one of our first three guys or four guys. Um, you know, Bryce Prince is the first we've seen of him, but for sure between between Gillum, Gillum's on that should be on that list. There's Jason Aguilar. He's going to be. You can see just by Jason's posture and how fast he's got around on his warm-up lap or cool-up lap. He's going to be frustrated. He knows Bryce. They're good friends. So uh, he's going to be stoked to see his buddy finish third. But I think Jason, just looking at it, the first two laps there hurt him the most. So got to get that bike off the line a little bit. He fit it, ends up fit the end. Saying Gillum should be on that list. He's got a two-year deal. Absolutely. He should. He's got a two-year deal, though. So yeah. he's locked in you know, to, to his team. And, and obviously what they're building here is absolutely incredible because eight-tenths of a second away from a, a win, they're going to go back and scratch their heads, and tomorrow's going to be a whole different race. Yeah, but the team he's got around him, they could build a great super bike. He's got a good group of people uh, down there with the ridiculous guys. Are you trying to spend their money already? Uh, I'm not trying to spend it. I'm just saying he's a big <laughs> guy. I'm sure he'd like to get on 1,000 himself. We'll take a break here on BN Sports as we wrap up Super Sport Race number one on the racetrack. When we come back, we're going to leave it to Hannah to talk to all these racers in Victory Circle. Prince gets to stand on the podium today, and he's with Hannah. Bryce, that was a really hard-fought battle for this podium. Your first of the season. That's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, you know, my crew gave me an awesome bike, uh, and uh, it was such a challenging race with JD. I noticed it looked like he was losing a little bit of tire life, and I felt like I had a little bit more pace on him, and the la that was the plan the last couple laps, just let him control the pace and try to get in front and break him, and use the lapper to our advantage. Um, I, I can't believe it, man. I mean... A month ago, I wasn't sure if I was going to be racing out here in Riders Law. A motorcycle lawyer stepped up and got me out here, and I was able to do the rest of the season with KWR. And Kyle's been great to me, and it's been such a tough season, and we're finally back where we need to be. And uh, I just got to thank Ken Hall and Olins for helping me set up the bike, Chris from Flash Tune. My guys, my two crew guys, Chris and Lewis, both of them worked their butt off, and I uh, couldn't be out here with all the people that I have behind me. So. Thanks, Bryce. Congratulations to you. Fantastic job. Miles says it all. I've seen that guy win races and not be that happy. So that's it great. You know, that, it just, it's just like such a relief off your shoulders because you're constantly telling yourself, yeah, I know I can do this. And then when it finally happens, you can hear he's got such a good crew of people around him. And he's exactly right. I know Bryce expects to be up there. Greg, is that pouring rain right it now that I'm saying? It is pouring rain. Pouring rain. All right, let's go down to Hannah, who's enjoying the rain with Hayden. Yeah, good thing that rain held off for your race, huh? Anyway, um, Second place finish for you today. Tell us about your race. How was it for you out there? Uh, yeah, I got off to a good start. Got my first hole shot in uh, a long time. So uh, it's been really good. We've got my starts working now. Now the first couple laps, uh, they just had a little bit of edge grip that I didn't, and they were able to come off of those long uh, corners. And so they were, Valentin was able to get that nice little gap, and then JD made a little mistake, and uh, it took me just a second to get by him. But I just kept clicking off uh, lap after lap. I would make a little mistake here and there. Um, man, I felt like I had the pace to win this thing, so we're going we're gonna to work on some stuff tonight. I kind of wish this rain would have come an hour ago, uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to work overnight and see how it goes tomorrow. Thanks, Hayden. Congratulations. <laughs> so Hayden Gillum able to do uh, a 44.5 on his last lap, only four tenths of a second slower than the best lap he put down, showing us that it's a very consistent motorcycle and consistent trip through the 
entire race. Absolutely, yeah. And now we got this weather coming in. I bet he wishes it would have been raining. We didn't even see this on the forecast. But, uh, you know, he was able to keep those guys coming. And look at that. It's just pounding down out there now. All right, let's go down to uh, umbrella-less and jacketless Hannah, who has uh, Valentin to bees, who's very happy after that win. Really consistent race for you. You led the majority of that race, really clicking off fast laps. How are you feeling right now? Second win of the season for you. So yeah, finally, you know, I, uh, since uh, my first win, I was waiting for so long and uh, I keep working the whole time and uh, keep, keep having a lot of confidence in myself. And finally, uh, I changed a couple, couple of things on my riding style since uh, one month and uh, it finally pay off. So, you know, this morning I wake up and I say, OK, today I have to make it happen. So this morning we, we, with my crew, we work really hard and uh, find some uh, some stuff on the bike which was uh, helping me so I was able to be consistent and uh, and yeah and lead the whole race it was really hard for me to keep um, focusing on on my uh, racing line but finally I did it so thank you to my M4 Suzuki XR team uh, and uh, we will try to do it again tomorrow well, best of luck to you tomorrow. Congrats, Valentin. Thank you. So for Valentin DeBees, his second win of the season and his streak of podiums continues. Anytime he's actually started a race, it's either first or second for him. Valentin DeBees getting the reputation as one of the best setup men in the paddock. So congratulations to he and the M4, M4 XR Suzuki team as now they have a great bit of data to go from. They were able to test that motorcycle mid-season to get a great baseline setting. You can see the track now a little wet for this one as we still have the Motul Superbike class coming up. We'll have to see how Moto America handles this because no wet laps yet this weekend. All right, we're going to take commercial break here on B in Sports. Stay with us because more coming at you from Pit Race in Western Pennsylvania. <laughs> 